Happy Tuesday, and welcome back to Conspiracy Cats. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a video somebody's posted, and they claim it cannot be debunked. It shows that rockets cannot work in the vacuum of space. So we're going to have a look at that. We've also got Chatbox Travels, and we've got a quiz featuring some of our favourite flat earthers. But before then, I need to apologise. Apparently, in the last few episodes, when I've been pouring water on the floor and on myself, I've been reducing myself to the likes of Laurel and Hardy and uh, other silly slapstick comics. And that kind of stuff just doesn't have a place for a, a show like this. So you'll never see me do that again. OK, anyway, time for Chatbox Travels. That should take about what three Well, there's another nice mess you've gotten me into. Well, we'll start this week's Chatbox Travels with a guy called Pucket Word, and I think I've pronounced that right this time. Maybe not. Um, he's a guy I did a video on recently, and this is his response to my video. Let's check it out. The heliocentric model has us looking in opposite directions at the night sky six months apart. This doesn't happen in real life. Now, we all know that is absolute nonsense. There are seasonal constellations that we can only see at certain parts of the year. That's a schoolboy error. But he goes on. That challenge is to realise that any model, especially the heliocentric model, goes against all known physics. So, I respond to that, and I ask him which parts of the heliocentric model defy physics. See? I told you. And he responds by saying this. Why don't you start with what you believe to be proof? Now, this is really disappointing. A real cop-out answer from him. So, I respond by saying this. Fuck it, word. You said that the heliocentric model defies physics. I am asking one last time, what parts defy physics? And would you be surprised if I told you, up until now, he's not answered that question. So, I thought I'd put Phuket word into a, an environment where he had to answer questions. Ladies and gentlemen, episode one of the Conspiratard Quiz. Conspiratards! Okay, Phuket World, you are our first contestant. Here's a little clue to who your opponent might be. Well, let's look at why, shall we? Matt, Matt, well, let's look at why you're in the light boat. Fuck's sake, you can see that there's a windy with the sun shining in there. How about you get outside? So here's Del from Beyond the Imaginary Brain. He's upset that I'm inside making videos on the internet, sat next to a window with sun pouring in, when I should be outside mixing with real people. Let's see what Gav's got to say. Exactly. Out in the real world, speak to real people. <laughs> So that's what Gav had to say while he was sat inside making a video next to a window with light pouring in. So, Pucket World, your opponents today, Dell and Gav, from Beyond the Imaginary Brain. How are you doing, people? Say hello, Phuket. Hello. Okay, Phuket. Dell and Gav seem to be quite aggressive sometimes, so you might want to up your game and show a bit more aggression. Have you got a message for them? We all know you're shitting your pants. <laughs> 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 okay, question one. We'll make this one easy. Shed Rage, you first. Who is your favourite YouTuber? Spiracy Cats. Oh, good answer. Ooh, go on. Right, pressure's on, Fukit. Who's your favourite YouTuber? Simon Dan. Hmm? Simon Dan. And I don't blame you. The guy's amazing. But can I ask, what's wrong with me? Uh... It's amazing, it's frustrating, it's, it's kind of hilarious, but it's also very sad. Okay, question two, and this one is for you, Fukit. What type of person can see that your scientific experiments really aren't scientific at all? Anyone with any ounce of, of sense. Correct. Okay, Shedrage, what type of person believes the nonsense that comes out of your mouth? The mental patients, the ones that need to be put on asylum. Two apiece. Right, Fuket, who is your favourite Harry Potter character? Uh, Ron. Ron? Fair enough. Not the one I'd have gone for. Del, your favourite character? Simon Dan. Who? Simon Dan. No, Del, your favourite Harry Potter character. Who's your favourite Harry Potter character? Simon Dan. Del, are you just repeating words you've already heard? <laughs> 
Phuket won. Okay, Phuket World, you are winning. Last question for you. Why does the Earth appear to look flat from our perspective? You just can't see curvature until you get really high up. Fantastic. Now, you've won. Dell, unfortunately you've lost, but we have to go out on a high. I'm going to ask you the last question. Can you get it right? No. Well, don't be hard on yourself. Um, let's choose a topic you're good at. Do you know anything about physics? No. Okay, what about maths? No. Okay. Um, what about geography? No. English? No. Numbers? No. Colouring in? No. Right. I'm going to make this really easy for you then. What am I holding in my hand? Diamond dance. No, no, no. Let me give you a clue. It's a ball you kick with the foot. Right? It's a ball you kick with the foot. Some people might call it a football. What am I holding in my hand, El? Diamond dance. <sighs> Phuket World, you've won. <laughs> okay, so now for the science bit. This is a video by a YouTuber called Frankie UK. He says it's completely undebunkable. So I'm going to spend the next minute and a half debunking it. And it claims rockets can't fly in the vacuum of space. Let's see how it starts. Rocketry and the Saturn engines, of course, owe a credit to Sir Isaac Newton. In his third law of motion, he stated, for every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. Yeah, good start. But wasn't there one other thing? Oh, and one other thing. Told you. Many people in the past thought that the rocket required a solid body of atmosphere to push against in order to move. Incorrect. Now, that is a misconception that we will deal with shortly in this video. But Frankie UK goes on to tell us how Newton's law is actually wrong. And it's not action and reaction, but there's something else very important. Now, to brilliantly illustrate his point about why resistance is needed, and therefore why rockets can't fly in the vacuum of space, he shows us this. Now, I'll warn you, this next clip came with no soundtrack. So what I'm going to do for those people that think I can't play the guitar is I'm going to provide the soundtrack and I'm going to play along with this. All right? Enjoy. All right, a bit of Guns N' Roses. Love this. Yeah, so cool. Power chord! It's not a power chord, is it? Power chord! Hang on, is that... Have I got my fingers in the right place? Man? So, so far what he's shown us is a bike won't ride across the road unless it's not levitating in the air and it's actually on the road. Now, I think you're probably wondering what this has got to do with rockets. And I'll be honest, so am I. Uh, I hope he'll explain it in the next bit. Wish I'd have done like that. Amazing, isn't it? And just to prove to you that he really thinks this cannot be debunked, check out the title at the bottom of this screenshot coming up now. So, for all the people out there who don't think rockets can work in space, let me give you a lesson on momentum. Check out some of these clips. <laughs> Now, according to Frankie UK, that recoil can only be caused by the bullet as it moves down the barrel of the gun, pushing against the air in front of it, which makes the, the gun fly backwards. And that really doesn't make any sense, does it? So let's look at momentum. Whenever anything moves, it has momentum. And we calculate the momentum using mass times velocity. Here's a cannon, whatever it looks like, it's a cannon, and it shot a cannonball. Now, we know that when a cannon shoots a cannonball, it rolls backwards, like this. Now, that is because of the law of conservation of momentum. Before this cannon fired the cannonball, nothing was moving. There was no momentum. And we have to conserve that. There has to be a result of no momentum, no matter what happens, because that's what we started with. So when the cannon was fired, 
right? It had a mass and a velocity, or the cannonball did, in this direction. Let's say it had a mass of 2 kilograms, a velocity of 10 meters per second. Its momentum would have been 20 kilogram meters per second in this direction. So to conserve momentum and have a total momentum of zero, the cannon must also move backwards with a momentum of 20 kilogram meters per second. Oh, oh. But the speed of the cannon is going to be much, much slower. Remember, momentum is mass times velocity. Because the mass of the cannon is much bigger, and both of these numbers have to multiply in this instance to 20, then a bigger mass means the velocity must be much, much smaller. Oh, oh. Now, before we get onto the implication of this um, and what it's got to do with rockets in, in space, you may be forgiven for asking, what if I had this ball and I threw it here? I've just changed the momentum of that ball, but I've not flown backwards. Why? Well, that's because force is changing momentum over time. And if the frictional forces involved in me, the frictional forces between my chair and the floor, if they are bigger than the rate of change of momentum that I've given to the ball, then I'm not going anywhere. Die man, Dan's. Now think about what's going on inside the rocket. Think about the forces at play. Think about what's causing the thrust to come out the rocket and think about the rate of change of momentum of all those particles coming out the bottom of the rocket. The law of conservation of momentum says that the rocket must have the same change of momentum in the opposite direction. It literally has nothing to do with pushing on the earth outside. That's ridiculous. <laughs> So, a slightly shorter video this week, and I do apologise for that. It's uh, massively busy at the minute, especially trying to keep up with two videos a week. But I will be back on Saturday with a much longer and probably much better video. Okay? See you then.